Hi guys! I have got a fantastic video for you today and it is on how to manipulate people into liking you. So let me explain. Sorry, I need to hydrate for this because once a week I fast, I don't eat, I just drink vegan proteins and greens and stuff and no, that's bullshit. I'm lazy and I don't eat because I don't want to cook. So I just drink my calories once a week, probably. It happens. Anyways, before you jump down my throat and write all these awful bullshit comments about why it's so awful to manipulate people, why am I encouraging this? I would like to start by reading the definition of manipulation. So the definition would be manipulation is an act of skillfully influencing or controlling someone or something often in a deceptive or unfair manner to achieve one's own goals or objectives. It can involve, var involve various tactics such as persuasion, coercion, or deceit and emotional exploitation. So pretty much everything we do is manipulative behavior. So if we are trying to achieve a desired outcome. So for instance, I got my hair cut. If you didn't notice, I'm sure you did. And I got my hair cut because I wanna look a little more professional at work. And that is a manipulative action because I took an action that I thought would evoke an, an emotional response or a thought process in other people I work with. And that's why I took the action. I didn't cut my hair because I feel like, you know, I'm bored, chop, chop. I cut my hair to achieve a desired outcome from other people. So I want to look more professional. I want to be seen as more professional. So I got a more professional haircut. That is manipulative behavior. It's coercive. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> so there's good ways to manipulate people and there's bad. But we're talking today about how to manipulate people into liking you and liking you more. So. I will talk about manipulation, but basically these are just normal persuasive actions and means you can take to make people more drawn to you, to like you. And there are the most, the most liked people in the world have two qualities. And this is from just research and, and, and stuff I've studied. And that is that they are charismatic and they have warmth. And I'm going to do another video on charisma and how to achieve charisma and become more charismatic because that's a very, very important feature because the most liked and influential people are known. If, you, if people are asked what two qualities they have that make them so influential, if you think about it and think about the people you admire the most, they display, they exude warmth and charisma. And so charisma, we all know how to be warm. We can fake it or we can be really actually warm. But charisma is something you need to learn. It's something you need to practice. So I will make a video on that. But off topic, I'm going to talk about other ways, things you can do to up your chances of somebody liking you. And you can use this with the opposite sex, the opposite gender. If you use it in a manipulative way to do harm or do badly to somebody, then you're just a terrible fucking human being and you're a bitch. Whether you're a male or a female or whatever your gender is, you're a bitch if that's what you do with it. This is to be good. This is to make people like you and want to be around you and for you to grow your circle of friends or make someone interested in you that wasn't interested in you prior. So here we go. Let's get into it. So the first way to make people like you, first thing, and this is scientifically proven, this works in any room, this works in business, this works professionally, it works personally, it works with strangers. Anyway, you make sure you remember their name. Introduce yourself, and we've already talked about how important it is to introduce yourself and let people know who you, your name, and it makes them know that you're important and that you're someone they need to remember. But when they tell you their name, Think of it the same. They're important. They're someone you want to remember. Someone's name to them releases endorphins into their brain that only their name, that's the one word, releases. It, it makes them feel good. It releases happy. It releases dopamine, the, ha the happy. You know, you know all about it. We've talked about it in a few videos now. So hearing, remembering someone's name and using it in conversation is a key way to make people like you. It's manipulative, but 
in a good way. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel good inside. It makes them feel happy. You're doing a good thing for them. If you forgot their name, don't ever say, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. Don't do it. Be manipulative. Go around the room, find out their name from somebody else. Don't ever acknowledge to somebody that you forgot their name. That's hurtful and it's insulting and they won't forget it. They'll feel like they were unimportant to you and that's why you didn't retain that information. So don't admit it. We can all do it. It happens to the best of us. It happens to everyone. There can be a lot going on when you meet somebody. You could be meeting three people at once and it's hard to remember names. But just be strategic in how you get that information back if you've forgotten it. That's all. And people are more likely to like you if you know their name, if you use it in conversation. Slip it in. When you're referring to them in conversation, use their name. You know, it's so easy. It's so easy to be like, oh, Haley, how was like, how was your vacation last summer? Like you, you just mentioned that you took a few weeks off last summer. Haley, how was that? What did you do? Did you do something fun? Right? Like it's really easy to use someone's name. Just don't do it awkwardly. Do it when it fits in and when it's appropriate. Second thing is, is don't talk about yourself unless they ask you. Okay. If you're in a conversation with somebody, don't talk about yourself, talk about them. You want to show genuine, genuine interest in them and you want to talk about their interests, their, their goals. You want to listen actively. So that means listening with your body and listening with your ears and not hearing. It's actually listening. A good way to show you're listening is to physically, your body language is to nod. That's a good physical indicator. Make sure you're making eye contact and a lot of t and also verbally you can um re like uh repeat some of the things they're saying regurgitate that information back to them and that re regurgitate that and that will demonstrate that you're actually listening to them the other thing you can do is make sure when you're asking them questions and listening to the answers asking them about them ask them about their accomplishments and we're going to talk about accomplishments again in a little while, but ask them about things that you know that already they've accomplished their, their achievements. Ask them about that. Say, you know, how did you get to, how did you, how did you come up with that idea? Or how did you, how did you feel when you reached that, when you reached that goal? And, you know, really show interest. It means that you know about them. You've heard of them. They're going to feel important. They're going to like you more. So next tip, don't say, I think we should really be friends. I, I think you're really, really funny. I think you're like, I think, you know, you're, you're, you make me laugh. You're so smart. You're so, you're so engaging. You're so intelligent. I, I love to be around you. None of that. Because that just means you want to, you want to mooch off them and drain their energy. You just want to take, take, take from them. The best thing, if you're going to come up with things like that, is say, you know, I think we would get along. We get along really well. We should we should spend more time together. We have a lot in common. We have this in common. We have this in common. And I appreciate this about you. And I feel the same way about this. And, you know, I think we would have a good time spending time together or hanging out. And that's a good way to put it. But don't ever say we should be friends or we should hang out more because I want, I like this and this and this and this about you. And because that just comes off as a one-sided relationship. In a relationship, any relationship has got to go both ways. It's give and take. So you want to demonstrate that you have as much to offer as they have to offer you. That it would be a mutually beneficial friendship to, to engage in. Or a mutually beneficial relationship to engage in. So that's how you want to phrase these sorts of topics and conversations. Next one. Don't give bad energy. It's the three C's, guys. Don't, sorry, don't, don't uh, criticize, don't condemn, and don't complain. And you'll read this all over the place in any psych psychological textbooks, in any psychology articles or journal articles or anything. Those three C's that will turn any person off, even if they're the most hateful, nasty bitch in the world, if you are complaining if you're criticizing if you're condemning everybody it's still on a subconscious level a turn off to people it's off-putting and for, for most for good people that aren't horrible 
it's just very much off-putting. So make sure, you know, if you're talking about, if something comes up that someone wronged you, be forgiving. Look at the positive side of it. Be, be a positive energy. Be a positive person. Don't be negative energy. Don't talk about, don't hold grudges. And if you do, keep that to yourself. Don't tell anybody because that's a shameful quality and it's just one that eats your soul. So don't do it or at least try not to or pretend you don't do it. Fake it. So, and if someone does you wrong, if the waiter brings you your food and it's uncooked and you can't choke it back like any reasonable person, be respectful, be really grateful, be appreciative that they brought you this food and it looks absolutely wonderful. And, you know, if you're going to send it back, make sure you show gratitude and show a lot of gratitude with the fact that you can send it back and they're going to re they you they're going to cook that for you better or they're going to correct the error that they made and really be grateful and show a lot of sincere gratitude and don't be defensive and ignorant and condescending and judgmental and critical and condemning and all of those awful things you don't want to be that it's off-putting. No one likes somebody that does that, even if they think they do, even if they're a nasty, horrible person themselves, back in the very back of their core, it's off-putting. It brings negative chemicals into their brain and nobody likes to feel negative. Even if they don't know why they feel negative, they just will. They won't recognize it, but they will. So don't do it. The next one is don't gossip. This one's simple. If somebody, If you're gossiping about other people to somebody, that just means you'll gossip about them too. And every half wit knows that. If I'm in a room with somebody and they start dumping on me every awful thing they hate about somebody else at work, I know that like next time they're with somebody else, they're going to talk about every awful thing I've ever told them. So I zip it, I shut up, I share nothing and I shut down and I separate myself as fast as possible. So don't be a gossiper. The next one, number six, is don't call out mistakes, or sorry, if you're going to call out a mistake somebody's made, if someone's done something to you and you've established this friendship or you're trying to and they've done something that has hurt you or upset you, don't call them out publicly. Call them out privately and do, do it in a non-confrontational, in a, a respectful manner. Do it in a, a gentle and set your boundaries like demonstrate your boundaries because there's no relationship if your boundaries can't be present and if they can't be accepted but do it in a non-confrontational way just say hey you know um you know i bet the way you know you talk to that waiter probably you might have ruined their night or i hope it didn't ruin their night because there that must feel it must feel pretty bad to be on your feet all night working trying so hard to make everyone happy and no matter what you do you can't please everybody. That's a terrible feeling. And you do it in private. You know, you can say things in a way that's not offsetting, that's not hurtful, that's not pointing the finger, directing in a critical manner, but bring up a topic and still broach an issue that you disagree with a behavior or something somebody's done and do it in a tactful and an, a manner that isn't going to destroy a friendship or a potential friendship. Next one, in some, sorry, if for some reason, this is a tough one, an opinion or a belief comes up that you don't agree with, okay? Let's say politics comes into it or religion comes into it or highly sensitive topics come up in conversation, which never bring them up. Don't be the one. But if it does, if these things come up and something very, very against your own values, your own beliefs, it's very conflicting with your own persona, your own personal characteristics and beliefs and values and morals and your own, your own care, your own character comes up. This is how you handle it. You don't disagree. You don't disagree with them. You don't disagree with what they said or their belief. You say, this is what you say. And this is going to matter depending on who you're talking to. For instance, imagine you're meeting your new girlfriend's parents and their parents say something awful, but you really want them to like you. This is where these kind of things become important. So this is where you would say something like, 
you'd turn, you'd flip it, you'd turn it into the action of what they did by, by acknowledging and speaking out about their beliefs. And that is a positive quality. So not positive to do it, don't do it. But if someone else does it, the fact that they had the guts to do it, acknowledge that, say it like this, say, I appreciate how you were so outspoken and you're confident in your beliefs. I value that. Uh, I value that you really know your opinions. I know where you know where you stand on, on which side of the mountain here you fall and or on which side of the hill. And I think that's a great character trait. I really admire that. So simple. You didn't acknowledge that you agree. You didn't acknowledge that you disagree. What you did acknowledge is, you know, the a positive trait that came out of that. And it's so like that. And it's a conversation ender right there. That turns into, you've turned it onto them, again, bringing it back to them. And there's nothing more people like to talk about or hear about than themselves. So they are going to like you more. If you turn their negative belief or character trait or characteristic into a flattering compliment about the fact that they are so strongly based in their character and they really... They really know themselves well. They're very self-aware and you really value and acknowledge that they're so they're so confident in their stance on difficult subjects and you really you really appreciate that about them. That's music to their ears. And then finish off by saying, Dave, say their name. <laughs> like Dave, I just love how much how, how you can sit here and we can be having this conversation and you know yourself so well that it's just clear cut for you. You know exactly how you feel about every situation or about every topic and you your, your character is so strong and you just know exactly where you fall on which side of the fence on these topics and I'm really impressed by that. It's really an impressive quality and characteristic that you have. That's, that's really, it's really great. I admire, I admire that about you, Dave. And you just like killed it like they like you you got a best buddy and your girlfriend's parents they love you you're in that, that that's how that works so again see the positive we talked about that already i'm not going to get too much into it um see the positive in people look for the positive look for positive characteristics and the very best thing way to be able to pull off all of these things is to know yourself the best to know what your triggers are know what you're sensitive about know what know yourself and how you respond to conversation and different topics so you're prepared and you're able to respond in a natural and non-confrontational and in an engaging and in a charismatic manner and be warm exude warmth and kindness and positivity we're going to talk about charisma and if you don't feel if you're not someone who has that you can learn it it used to be believed that you either have it or you don't but i don't believe that i believe there are skills with to being charismatic and there are traits and there are tricks because sociopaths are very charismatic and they learn that by watching others so they've learned that in life by absorbing it so if they can do it everybody can do it so you just got to be open to it and i'm going to teach you how so watch for that video it's going to be all about how to become more charismatic so Here's the last bonus tip for you guys, and this is going to be sort of off topic, but not off topic. First of all, com if you're going to compliment people, compliment don't compliment them. Compliment them on their achievements. People are most proud of the things they've accomplished, the things they've achieved. It means you've looked into them, you find them interesting as a person, you find them valuable, and it's much more flattering than to say, oh, I really love your suit, than to say, you know, I really love what you've done with your business. You really have grown it and you've hired really wonderful people. Or you, your children, you make really beautiful babies. Look how cute your kitties are. You've done such a great job. Or your kids are the most polite kids I've ever seen. Like, how did you teach your kids that? Uh, acknowledge people's accomplishments. Acknowledge people's work and what they have done and the things they have worked towards. Because that's much more flattering than to say nice shoes. Right? So that's one. The second one is, this is just a tip to keep in mind. And this is very manipulative. But if you want to be vulnerable... When you're shaking hands with someone, palm up. If you want to be dominating, palm down. So this would depend. If you want to go for, if you're going to a job interview and you want them to like you, you might want to show 
confidence and strength and dominance. So you shake with your hand over, right? But if you want to show that you're in awe of somebody and you want to show more respect and a lower position in authority, for instance, maybe I don't know how this works. I'm not a guy, but meeting the girlfriend's parents, maybe you would go for a vul more vulnerable handshake underneath. For women, if you're on a date, you might go for the vulnerable side. That's a little more feminine. That's a little softer. That's that's giving a man a, do a place to be dominant, and men need that, and they need they they need to feel that way, and that is innately flattering a man. So, letting him have his hand up, he'll definitely just feel dominant right from the start when you shake hands, and you will come off as more feminine. So, anyways. Though that's just uh, an extra little bonus and you can do with it what you will, but those are manipulative tactics you can use to do good with and to make people like you a little more. Hope it was helpful and hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you like my new manipulative, more professional haircut. I think it's, uh, I think it's cute. I like it. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with a video about charisma or charisma and being more charismatic and that'll be really important to watch so don't miss it see you soon guys